Okay, so this morning we are going to talk through um, using um, MailChimp to set up email blasts and email campaigns. But then I am also gonna show you um, kind of a little bit of a workaround, maybe a secret um, to send out an email blast that's a little bit simpler. So um, oh, first question, let's see here. Um, yeah, so Jeannie, I would be happy to help you with a Facebook ad campaign. Um, we can set up some time after this and you and I can walk through that together. Perfect. So before we get started on anything uh, MailChimp focused, we want to make sure that our MailChimp account is connected to uh, command. And as being an agent with Keller Williams, you do get a free MailChimp account. And that MailChimp account includes one audience, up to 2,000 contacts, and up to 5,000 emails per month. So anything above that number of contacts or emails sent, you will have to pay for, and it is kind of expensive, um, but they do have a bunch of different options. But as an agent, you get that free, uh, free account. So to connect your MailChimp account, if you haven't yet already, come up to your settings in the top right-hand corner where your name is, click on this drop-down menu, and click Settings. And then, scroll down to the bottom and you can see we have email services and MailChimp. If you haven't set up your account, your account yet, just click connect account and it will walk you through the steps of um, creating that account for you. You will need to verify your email address, go through a couple steps and, and set up a password and then it will connect it and you'll be good to go. While we're here in settings, I would recommend if you haven't already set up your command email, to do this now, it's super easy. All you have to do is click on manage, type in your sender name, so what you want your name to look like in your uh, recipient's inbox, and then the reply to email, and then click save changes. Your command email is an e the free email service that's used to send out smart plans uh, and offers in command. Set it up because the trick that I show you at the end um, will use command email. So now that we have our uh, MailChimp set up, let's go into MailChimp to make sure that we have everything set up. So let me open a new browser here. So I'm gonna just log in. So I'm gonna select Keller Williams First Atlanta because that's gonna be my, person, my personal account that I set up. Now the reason I want to go into MailChimp first is because as I said earlier, we only get one audience. If you already have an audience set up in MailChimp, you won't be able to upload your new audience for this campaign we wanna create this morning. So we need to make sure we don't have any audience set up, or if we do, we need to delete it. So to do that, uh, to check our audience, up here in the toolbar at the top, we'll select audience. And then it says here, the, this audience has 60 contacts, 60 of them are subscribers. So you can see here's my audience name, April COVID-19 email blast. And this is from when I did this training a couple months ago. I wanna get rid of this uh, email audience so I can add a new one today. So to do that, over here on the right-hand side where it says manage audience, click on the dropdown and click view audiences. Now, if you just set up your uh, MailChimp account, you may actually have a contact in here. They may have automatically added yourself as a contact. If that happened, delete that contact. Um, or what you could do if you already have an audience set up in here, you can select this audience and then you can export those contacts. So if you have gone through here and you've created your own audience um, of a bunch of agents that you wanna send out your, your new listings to or buyer needs to, you don't wanna necessarily just delete those contacts, you do have the option to export. So you can ex export those to an Excel document and keep those so that way in the future you'd still be able to have those or even better, you could export them out of MailChimp and then upload them into command as agents and then you could set them up as their own audience in command. Whichever works best for you. So for me, I am going to select my audience here and then I'm going to click delete and then it's going to have me type in delete in all caps 
to confirm that I actually do want to delete this audience and click delete. So I have this screen here. It says you haven't created an audience yet. And that's what I want because I'm going to create a new audience this morning for the email I want to create for my June newsletter. So now that we are all good um, with our audience, I'm going to go back into command. And to get started in command, I'm going to go to campaigns because the way you set up a newsletter will be as a campaign. So I'm going to click over here on the megaphone where it says campaigns. And it'll drop me into the dashboard. It kind of gives me an overview of all the campaigns, the amount of money I've spent for my paid campaigns. I love the quick posts here. So KW's done a great job of creating some of these awesome videos that we can create our own neighborhood videos. Um, and at videos that look that are professionally done make you look like a superstar. So just why we're here, just want to point that out. Uh, anyway, so to create our campaign, our email blast campaign, we'll come up here to the top right hand corner and click on create a new campaign. And then today's campaign is going to be an email blast. So I will select email. And one thing I love about command is they reset everything up. So it is step by step by step. So just follow the steps and with everything in command just start at the top of the page and work your way down. So I'm going to give this campaign a name. So I'll name this uh, June uh, email newsletter. Be as specific as you want. Um, if you have a specific topic you want to include, if you're sending out multiple newsletters, or if this is kind of, you want to send out maybe a guide for summer activities uh, that you want to send to your clients of you know, some fun, safe family activities that aren't going to break the bank or whatever kind of content you want. Um, give that the title there. Then what is our goal here? This really is going to be all about brand awareness. So I just want to, you know, get my name as Nicholas Core Real Estate Group, Nicholas Core Realtor out to my sphere, um, provide them with some content that I think is relevant and beneficial. And then I'm going to click where will this campaign run, select MailChimp. And now I'm going to click set up campaign. Perfect. So now again, we'll just walk through the steps of configuring our email. So we select our account. So I've already connected. If you have multiple accounts here, you could select from the drop down. So I'm going to select my Nicholas Core KW account. And now we're going to do the send to list and the recipients list. And this is going to be one of the most important parts because this is what we just went through MailChimp to make sure we deleted any audience that we had here, because now we want to create an audience. If you already have an audience set up, it will be here in the drop down menu and you could select it, but I want to create a new one. So I'm going to click create list here. List name. Um, again, you can name this whatever you want. Um, if this is to other agents, you can, you know, for new listings, you can select uh, Atlanta Realtors, you could select Sphere. For today, I'm just gonna name this June Newsletter Audience. Default subject, so this is gonna be the subject line of the email. It's not gonna be the, alt, the actual one you put in the email, but just in case anything happens, it will default to the subject. So I'm gonna select um, great summer activities for the whole family. Whatever you, you know, whatever you want, subject default from name. So I'll just put my name here, Nicholas Corb. So now we create our audience. There's two options here, add contact or add contact tags. So if you just want to go through and you want to create an audience of just a few people, you could go through here and you can manually select the names of all the people you want to add and individually add them. But since we've already spent so much time making sure our database is robust and clean and organized, we have a bunch of different tags that we can use. So it's easier to just add a whole group of people based on tags. So, uh, I want to send this audio, this email to all the people that live in the state of Georgia. And I have set up an in-state tag for all my contacts that live in Georgia. So what I can do here is I can just scroll down through all my tags that I've created. And I'll 
Don't scroll too fast because it does take a second for command to load them all. But I can come up here. I just keep scrolling to where I get to in state. Perfect. Oh, and just jump right past it. So let me just scroll back up. Where did it go? Goodness. Let me just, there we go. So let's type in in state. Um, and let's say I also want to add this to people that I knew. Um, this one add, that live in Cobb County. I just want to make sure that if maybe I missed a tag, and then I also want to make sure that I add people that are UGA grads, which it should be in here because I have, have a UGA tag. So I'll just scroll through here and see if it shows up. If it doesn't automatically show up, it just means that it hasn't loaded in the list yet. So just give it a second to load as you scroll through. Of course, now it doesn't want to work at all. These should be in alphabetical order. All right, let me just give this another try. Okay, so it's not gonna load, so I'm just gonna pick um, GCSU. I just wanna double check and make sure that all these people uh, receive my email. So I have a question here. Oh yes, go dogs, Clark. <laughs> so add all the tags that you want. Do keep in mind that as you're adding all your different tags um, or contacts, that you do have a max number of 2,000. So if you have a huge database um, and you have, I don't know, 2,500 contacts in there for the state of Georgia or in-state, you'll get a bounce back when you try to set up your list. And then the last thing here that's required is to remind people how they signed up for your list. So this is going to be um, some text that's going to appear at the bottom of your email. Uh, you want to let people know how they receive this email. And I'll just put something, um, you interacted with or requested real estate information from Nicholas Core. And I, you know, always be safe. You can always add Keller Williams first Atlanta. You can never go wrong with adding your brokerage. Um, to the end, just to make sure you're always in compliance. So once you've filled in all your information, you've added all your contacts, you've added your tags, you can click save list. Oh, one thing I do wanna add when creating this list, if you wanna add a bunch of tags and then you wanna go through and add a couple individuals, uh, individual contacts here, you can do that, you can mix and match. Again, it just has to be 2,000 contacts or less. So once you're good, we will click save list. And now what this is doing is this is connecting with MailChimp and it is uploading all of those contact names and email addresses from command into MailChimp. So it may just take a minute. So it's gonna spin uh, while it's connecting the two, the two uh, services. And then once it's done, uh, I'll show you how that appears in MailChimp. So we'll just give this a second. It usually just doesn't take more than a minute, but sometimes depending on internet speed and if the labs team in uh, Austin, something went wrong, perfect. Let's try it again. Perfect, okay, so it's saying that user does not have access. That could be because I just went through and deleted that um, audience and it's using cache data, so I'm just gonna try it one more time. Okay, so it's not working for me, so I apologize. Um, that is probably because I just deleted the audience this morning, and we're only supposed to be able to create new audiences within um, one per week. So let me try, let's see if I get rid of these other tags, and let's just try the in-state tag, and let's sit, see if I hit save list, if that makes a difference. Nope, okay. So if you get this message, it's because more than likely you have an audience in uh, MailChimp or you just recently deleted it like myself. So give it some time. So here, what you'll do uh, is you will, actually, you know what, let me, let me try something really fast. What if I clear my cache and cookies? Let's give it a, let's try this from all time. 
I'm gonna see if this helps, if I can reload um, command and MailChimp, so that way you can actually see how it connects, because I do really wanna show you um, how this appears in, um, in MailChimp, because it's very important. And this hopefully will just take, take a second. I promise I'll, I'll get you out of here by 11 o'clock. Perfect, so we've deleted our cash and cookies. I'm gonna hit refresh here because it's gonna have me log back in. And I'm just gonna breeze through this very quickly. It's gonna have me log back into MailChimp as well. Accept all cookies, log in. Perfect, send SMS code just to verify that it's me. All right, two, two, six, two, three, nine, five. Perfect, okay. Oh, so it looks like it actually did add the contacts here. Perfect, all right. So I don't know why I was getting that user error, so that stinks that that happened. But you can see here that when I'm in the audience tab of MailChimp, it actually shows that I've created this audience. I have 541 contacts and 541 subscribers. So this is exactly what I wanted to show you. Um, and now I'm getting a 502 error from commands. So let's try agent.kw.com. Let's just go back to login. So once you've hit save on your audience, like I just did, and it connects to uh, MailChimp, I would recommend that you come back into MailChimp, click on the audience tab, and then we can come over here to view audiences. And this way you'll double check to make sure that you have your audience created. Like, like I said, we only allowed one audience here and up to 2000 contacts. So this is what you should see. Hopefully you don't receive an error message like I did, um, but hopefully we're able to uh, move forward with setting up our campaign. So what I'll do is I'll come back to campaigns, click on emails, doesn't show that I have it set up as a draft. Okay, perfect. So I'm just gonna create a new one and I'm gonna breeze through these steps because I want to, to get through this all for you. Uh, June, newsletter, brand awareness, MailChimp, accept cookies, set up. So now I'm back here in the email configure step. So where we just left off is right here in the create list section. But since I've created that list, my June newsletter recipients should be right here. Let's see if I click edit. You must select one of the list. I don't know why it's not showing. So theoretically, what should be here, <laughs> I'm so sorry, is the recipient list, which should be this June newsletter audience. But it is not showing up today. Let's see if I hit refresh, if that does anything. Probably not. MailChimp, set up campaign. All right, so it looks like it's doing something here with those three dots. So it looks like it's connecting to MailChimp. So hopefully, fingers crossed, um, it's going to load my contact list here. Perfect, recipient list. So you should now see June newsletter audience. Maybe the issue this morning is not actually command, but it is my patience. So when you're setting this up at home, just give it a minute um, to load and it should be there. Um, perfect. So um, yes, I can uh, email, uh, could you email this to me? I'll email you the video um, for this class after this for sure. Perfect, so I have my recipients here. Sorry for all the back and forth for the last couple steps. Let me know if you have any questions about that. I'm happy to walk through it again. Um, but so now I've selected my audience, my June newsletter audience. Now let's go fill in the information. So sender from Nicholas Core, reply email, nicholascore at kw.com. Subject line here. Uh, I think we made uh, great summer activities for the whole family. 
You can put whatever you want. Uh, make sure that it's relevant. Make sure it's something that it's going to um, interest your database. So uh, something of value is what I like to recommend. So now our next step is to create our news, actual newsletter. So to do that, we will select design content for your email. So click here. Command has two templates set up for us to send out newsletters uh, in the HTML format, which is gonna be the pretty newsletters with all of the pictures and graphics and links and whatnot. There are two templates, um, similar but not the same. So what I'll do is I'll click newsletter style one, and you can come through here and you can see the template over here with all the uh, images and all the header text set up and we just fill in all the information over here on the right. So if I want to add a banner up here, uh, I can just click on here. Technology, I just have some quick photos that I can use. So this is an image that I previously made um, in designs. Prop image. Let's do wide, perfect. And then you can see it loads right there. So as you start to go through uh, and you make these edits, they'll automatically show up on the left-hand side. Um, board kids this summer. Here's a list of fun and safe activities for the whole family. Perfect. So you can see as I type over here on the left-hand side, if I want to come over here, just type in June 2020. And then section one, come over here. Um, and this would be my first recommendation. Um, beat the heat at Six Flags Whitewater. I don't, you know, I don't know headline and then you know this is a you know 20% off um, tickets tickets to uh, whitewater if you've never been to whitewater it's so much fun I love it even though I'm 35 years old I still love whitewater uh, and then um, just add some text here more text 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 kind of explaining the coupon where they can get it. I can add um, an image here. So I would probably want to add an image of Whitewater. I'm just going to use this one that I preloaded from an old listing. And then this is a square image. So I'll just select prop image. Perfect. Boom. And then you can see how this starts to come together. All right. So you just kind of repeat this for sections uh, two and three and four. And then you have your other footer and you'd click apply design. Now, you may not like this template, which is fine. We can go back and look at template number two. So just click on newsletter style two. And it's gonna be very similar. Um, this, the blank templates over here on the left and we'll fill in all the information over here on the right. Now, most of this information that's here that's pre-populated comes from the marketing profile that you set up when you first set up your command. So that way it just loads all that information so you don't have to worry about. So I'll just quickly um, put in um, some information for kids this summer here. Uh, here is a list of great family uh, activities for the whole family. Summer fun. All right. Section one, uh, beat the heat at Six Flags White Water. And then our description, so let's do text, 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 if I could spell correctly. And then we'll add our image. So I'm going to add this fun one here. And then we can see here, it's going to default to the wide setting because this is more of a wide um, format. So I'll just click crop image. 
and it will load there on the left and you can see what it looks like. And if I want to um, select, you know, add a button here, I can say, um, click for coupon. And then I could come down here um, and then www. whatever the URL would be, six flags, whitewater.com coupon. Perfect. So now we have the first section here, beat the heat. We have some text explaining, hey, you can get 20% off and then you click here for the coupon. So this is uh, newsletter style two. Hey, two, this one may not work for you either, which is totally fine. If it doesn't, we'll click back to templates. If you really like this one, click up, update here and click apply design but I do wanna show you how you can build your own template. So I'm gonna click back to templates and I'm gonna click on the button here in the top right hand corner that says create new template. And this is gonna put you into um, the design templates and I will select in the bottom right hand corner, we'll select uh, the plus sign because this is gonna let the system know I wanna create a whole new template from scratch and I will select email and I'll click next. So um, what I want to do is like everything in command, I want to start at the top and work my way down. So I always want to start by giving this a name, um, June news letter template. And I like giving uh, things dates so I can just keep track of when I've uh, made them and whatnot. And then over here on the right hand side, very similar to um, the landing page editor, we have templates. Um, so you can, you know, mix and match and, and make, uh, this template any which way you want. Now I will say, um, it does take some patience to use this. Uh, I myself am not the most proficient at creating the email templates. But don't worry, I have a fourth option for you. So you can you know create your section here, um, and then if I want it, so I have my cell, and then I can add an image in that cell. Goodness. None of these things are working. See, so let's let's just try adding um, an image. Perfect. Add select image. I'm just gonna. I'll select this one right here. Open. Perfect. There we go. Now it's gonna make it really big. So I'll need to go through here and make it smaller so it doesn't look weird. Perfect, and then you could add um, some text. I wanna move this down. Then I, I update text here. And then I can change the font. I can click over here to change the font. So if I want to change the font over here, I click on the paintbrush, typography, and then font to do Comic Sans. Perfect. And I want to make this center aligned. Perfect. There we go. So, and then I want to add some more widgets. So I'll click back on the, the boxes here. And then let's say we want to add, um, Let's do uh, a half section here. So now we have two cells. And then I want to add an image in one of the cells. So we'll come over here. I'm going to drag this into that cell. And then I'll add that picture that I have of my listing. And I'll click on that. And now it's really, really big. So let's make it really small. Let's make it small again. Perfect. So you can see there's that cell and then I still have um, my other cell right here. So now I can add text to this cell right here. Um, and I'll type in beat the heat at six flags 
white water with 20% off. Uh, and then again, I can update that font here by clicking on the paintbrush, typography. Uh, let's make this Georgia media. Let's do font size. Oh, we can, let's do 20. We can change the color of the font. We can make it, let's make it perfect. Okay, yellow, text align, we want it to be centered. Actually, let's make it, let's make it centered. Vertical align, let's do uh, middle. All right, perfect. So you just go through here and you can create your own uh, own template. Let's say if we wanted to add a button, we have a button here, so I can just add a button. Now I will say this, the buttons are not the easiest to work with. <laughs> so, um, coupon, click here to receive 20% off. Now, I have not been able to work with buttons uh, very well. They don't like to work. I haven't gotten them to work. Um, but this is how you'd go through and you would make your own template. Perfect, so I can just click Update Template. And now I can come over here back to my campaign and I can click My Design Template and I can select that right here All right, well, it's not letting me select it here. All right. All right, update template. Let me close out of it. Let me see. Unsafe changes, yes. So, KWR templates, let me click my design templates. I don't know why it's not letting me select this. All right, so I'm just gonna, let me just throw in an image here. Ah, things have gone really sideways here. My apologies. So I'm just gonna throw in this banner. I just want, so we can uh, see what it looks like in just a second. Best for most places, let's do one. Perfect, apply design. Make sure all your fields are, ah, oh, man. Okay, why well, don't wanna go through here and fill in all of these fields for the uh, time's sake. So, oh, here we go, perfect. Now it selected, I guess it did select uh, my email preview. Perfect, things are just happening over here and I don't even know it, <laughs> my apologies. So, I selected my design. It shows a quick preview over here. You have the option, you can click a preview here, and this will show you um, the different options of what it will look like on a, an iPad, a phone, and a computer. And when you're done. Now, once you have all this set up, you have your email, all your content filled in, you have your account, our recipient list, our from, our subject and our content all set up, you can click send. Now, I'm not gonna click send right now because I just added a bunch of people uh, to a very weird looking email. So I'm just gonna click save as draft. So if you send it, you're good to go. So I'm just gonna click save as draft, save and exit. Okay, I don't know what that means. So I'm just gonna try to click this again. Save and exit, the advert must be an integer. I don't know what that means. All right, so I'm just gonna ignore that error message because I've been getting a few of them this morning. But what I wanna show you is that once you send out your email, you're gonna to wanna to know how did that email perform? Who received it? Who opened it? Did anyone click on anything? And the way to do that is through reports. So over here on the left-hand side, you can see these uh, three little bar charts and that's reports. So if you click on reports, I'm gonna leave. 
And then at the top we have, um, it's gonna to default to the dashboard, but we have th four different tabs, dashboard, reports, goals, and emails. Click on emails. And this will show you all of the email activity that you've had for um, this past month. But you can come over here and you can select, uh, if you wanna select different months, and it'll show you how your, camp, how your emails worked. Um, so here you can see, click, open, replied, undelivered, unsubscribed, Marcus spam. So this is where you'll get some insights into how that email performed from command. Now, I promise there's another slightly easier way that you can send out an email or an email blast. And that is through MailChimp directly. Now there's a benefit and a con um, to sending out an email directly out of MailChimp. The benefit is their template, they have more template options. Uh, the templates are a little bit easier to use. So it may make the process a little bit easier for you. The con is, is you don't get that reporting metrics in command. So uh, in command and you go to a contact card, you have your email reports, it shows you every single email someone received, what they opened, how they interacted with it, and it's able to track all those touches to make sure you're getting the right amount of touches for your database each year. So you lose that. Now you do get some reporting in um, command, or sorry, in MailChimp, but it's more limited. So I'm gonna show you really quickly how to make your a MailChimp a campaign directly out of MailChimp, and then I have another even smaller little workaround um, that you could use as well. So I'm gonna go back into MailChimp. Here I have my audience. So perfect to have my 541 contacts. Now I wanna create an email here. So to do that up in the top left-hand corner, click on create and then select email. And it's gonna be very similar to the steps in command where you just kind of follow through the steps and go through them all. Um, campaign name, June newsletter. Let's do June 2020. Because as a good agent, I'm gonna be consistent, so I'm gonna be sending these newsletters out every month. So I'll click begin. All right, and then we'll just kind of go through the process. So it's gonna include all my 541 recipients. Click the add from, so it's gonna to default to the information here. So nicholscore at kw.com, click save. Subject. Great summer activities for the whole family. I always like to just read, um, paste that into the preview text. All right, well that's not working, so I'll just hit save. And now we'll go click on content, and here's where we did where we design our email. Now we only get a few free templates, so if you scroll over, you can see here's featured. Um, and these two allow me to use it, but when I scroll over this one, it says upgrade to use. And we have basic, basic, and then it says upgrade to use. So we only have four templates that we can use, but these are still pretty great templates and we can still make some edits to them. So let's click on um, make an announcement. So we'll click on this. Perfect. So up here, uh, click on logo, I can replace, so it's gonna have me, um, I can upload a file here, so let me click upload. And then I wanna add the First Atlanta logo, so KW Logos, First Atlanta, RBG, let's do, perfect. Here we go, let's use that one, it's gonna upload. and then click insert. And now it has the first Atlanta logo at the top. And then I can make it smaller if I want to, because that is kind of big. <laughs> no one wants to see first Atlanta that big. So just, you know, change the size there. And then click save and close, because that's just gonna close out that um, part of um, the email. And I can come over here, have an announcement to make. Um, kids already bored this summer are some great activities for the whole family. And this seems kind of big, so I may make this just a little bit smaller. No, font size, let's try 18. No, we'll go a little bit bigger. 23. Oh, 
Oops, do all of it 23? We'll do 24. Oh, no, we don't want that either. Perfect. So just click save and close. And you just kind of go through here and you can just uh, update your images. So I want to, you know, for any time you want to hit update one of these um, stock images, just click on replace. And then it'll take you here where you could the content studio where you can upload your own images. So I'll just click upload. Uh, and then I'll add, let's do this image. Click open. It's going to upload it. Let's give that a second. Click on it and then click insert. Perfect. And then click save and close. This is kind of big. Let's see. Settings. Rounded corners. All right. Trying to see if we can make it smaller. But you can see here what the process is like. You just kind of go through um, here, start typing in text. Um, use a coupon for 20% off at Six Flags. white water. Everyone loves white water. You know, and then you could just start, you know, coming down to this section and then um, here are some great spots for lunch after the pool. And you can just start updating this information in which way you want. You have a lot of options. You can update all the text. Uh, you can align the text differently. You can add in bullet points like they have here. And then you have this button here. So find out more. Um, so here I can easily add the click for coupon. Let's do click for 20% off. And then web address, advanced options open a new tab and this will be www.sixflagswhitewater.com slash coupon and then click save and close. So now you can see the MailChimp editor to me uh, is a little bit simpler to use, a little bit easier. Um, so this is another option if you want to create a newsletter um, directly in MailChimp. So once you're done updating your email, Click continue, and it'll take you back to um, the screen here for the whole content or for the whole 20, June 2020 newsletter. And you'll see here, it's not going to let me send it because I still have a lot of um, places that I need to fill in um, placeholder content. But then once you're done uh, up here in the top right hand corner, It'll give you the option to schedule to send this. So let's say you create this today, this afternoon, but you want to send it tomorrow at 10.15. You can schedule to send it Friday, June 12th at 10.15, or you can click send and send it immediately. I'm not going to do either one of those. I'm not. I'm going to click on finish later and it'll save as a draft so I can go back in to uh, command, or sorry, go back into MailChimp and finish later. Perfect. And this is going to be under my campaigns tab. So when I come back into MailChimp, I'll click on campaigns. It'll take me here and then I can click on edit. Now, there is one other way that you can send out an email blast that may be even more simple than MailChimp. And it's called a smart plan. Now, in the, the way that smart plans are set up as of now and as we all think of them are as um, a series of emails and text messages um, that we put our drip camp or put contacts on drip campaigns to keep in contact, provide information. But you can also make a one step smart plan directly in command for a text based email blast. Now it's not gonna be all fancy with a bunch of pictures like we could set up um, in command and MailChimp, but it can still have the same great content and be really simple. And there is a benefit to sending text only emails. A lot of the email, well, let me first back up a second. Think how many emails do you receive each day from retailers, companies, spam that are um, beautiful, they have all these pictures and lots of links, and it's great, but oftentimes they will get marked as spam. If they get marked as spam, 
then they get sent to the spam or the trash box automatically. And we don't want that to happen to our emails because our emails are the best ones. And we want all of our contacts to receive our emails because we want to provide value. We want to keep them up to date uh, on the market, on what's going on this summer, how to keep their friends and family safe. So we don't want it to get marked as spam. One of the benefits to get around that is text-based emails are far less likely to get marked as spam. So to do that, let's create our one-step smart plan. So over here on the left-hand side, we'll click on smart plans. And then over here in the right-hand side, we'll click on create. Now I've done a whole um, smart plan class um, that's on YouTube. So if you want a lot more information on how to build smart plans, it's there. I'm also happy to walk through this one-on-one -on -one with you, uh, but I'm gonna breeze through this pretty quickly today because it should be uh, relatively simple. So our plan name is gonna be June 2020 newsletter. And click apply. Now we wanna send just an email. So I'm gonna click on send email here. So it's gonna be a simple email. We do have the option for HTML emails in command, but they're very, very simple and very basic and you can't edit the images. It's more gonna be like happy birthday, uh, work for me as a seller, as a buyer, home anniversary. So we're gonna keep this as a simple uh, text email. Email subject, um, uh, great summer activities for the whole family. Perfect. And then we can come down here and we can just start typing in our email. One of the great things about command is that they have these things called merge fields and they allow you to personalize a mass email. So let's say I wanna type in hi, and then I want the email to say that my contact's name. To do that, I use a merge field. So up here where you can see this F button, it says use mer your merge field to automate contact associated with subject. So what I can do is I can click on this merge field, click contact first name, so now when this email gets sent out, it is going to automatically put in this contact's first name. And then to start typing out an email, like you normally would, having a great summer, time has flown by. I know your kids are probably already bored. So I put together a list Uh, excuse me, together a list of uh, fun activities for the whole family that are safe and won't break the bank. That may be a run on sentence. I apologize. And then you can just start, you know, creating your email. And one of the nice things is rather than having images um, set the difference between um, the content, we can just use bullet points. So I can just select bullet points here and I can do um, let's come right here and do six flags white water I can add another bullet point let's see if we can can we tab this over no that's not gonna work all right six flags white water Um, save 20% off tickets with this coupon and then www.whitewater.com slash coupon. And then we can make this a link right here. Add link. Perfect. And then you can just put it, continue to put in all the um, items you want to include. I, don't, I want to turn this off, perfect. Um, and then have an amazing summer. Thank you, Nick. Now, one thing I wanna call out, in the smart plan emails, your email subject isn't going to automatically um, be included. So you do need to include your subject, or sorry, your um, signature, so that way they have all your contact information, 414-8238 and then Nicholas or, um, dot com. And then you can make these hyperlinks. So just click here, make it a hyperlink, add link, same thing here, add link, 
control copy www dot perfect so now I have my quick email so I'm just gonna click the little save button here now I want to start adding context to this so to do that I can click on this icon right here which is a little outline of a person with a plus sign so click here so you can go through and you could search by name so I could type in Nicholas core and I could add in the contact that I've created for myself uh, right here perfect um, or I can come over here to tags and I can scroll through all the tags that I have and I can select my in-state tag because that's the one I wanted to use earlier Just scroll through here perfect select in-state select all now it's only going to add um, 16 at a time, which is kind of pain in the butt. But you can just kind of go through, um, select all. Next, select all. And then you just click add to smart plan. Can I add more to 50 contacts at a smart plan at a time? Okay. Let me come back. All right, so now I'll click Add to Smart Plan. When you do this, you have a couple options of when you want it to start. You can click Start Now, so it'll send it out right away, or you can select to have it start tomorrow, so I can have it start um, on the 12th, or let's say I want them to kick off the week, so June 15th, they can start it then. Or I can stagger this, so let's say I only want my email to go out to 12 people a day. And the benefit of only uh, sending it to 12 people a day is that if you're sending this out to a lot of people at once, you don't want to get 50 responses all at one time like, oh, this is so great. Do you have any information on um, Dollywood? We wanna go to um, up to Dollywood for the, the weekend. You don't wanna have to then start responding to all those emails. So if you stagger them, they'll be able to manage uh, the responses more easily and take less of your time. Because the goal here is to really add a lot of benefit to a lot of people. I don't want this to start taking up a bunch of your time of trying to um, respond and become a, a summer vacation planner. So you just you know click on confirm for whichever option you want. I'm gonna click cancel because I don't actually want to add these people um, to the smart plan. And then when you're done, click save. And then I'm gonna click the back button here. And you can see I now have my summer 2020 event calendar uh, Let me actually, wrong one. I'm sorry, my June 2020 newsletter right here. And it's one touch. So I just walked through a lot of information on how to set up email blasts. Uh, we walked through setting up our email blast in command. We updated uh, and created our contact list or audience to sync with MailChimp. Had a little bit of a hiccup, but it worked. Uh, then I showed you how to design your email in command as well as create your campaign your email in MailChimp, and then a super secret way of creating a one-time only smart plan for text-based emails. There's a lot of information. What questions do you have um, that I can answer? You can you know, chat or you can um, um, unmute yourself and I'm happy to answer any questions you have. All right. Well, if there are no questions, uh, I'll let you guys go. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. As you are starting to play around in creating um, your email campaigns, reach out to me, let me know what questions you have, what I can help you with, as well with any other um, KW Tech questions that you may have. I'm here to help any way that I can. And this afternoon, I am doing DocuSign office hours, so if you have any DocuSign questions, join me for the two hours from one to three o'clock. I'll answer all your questions and get everything set up for you. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. I really appreciate it.